<laughs> Greetings, Facebook. Hello and happy Halloween. <laughs> I am the Joker, and I've been sent here by Batman himself to talk about cheap lights versus expensive lights. You see, well, the first thing is that uh, the first thing is it's really hot and sweaty underneath that. <laughs> That's better. Hello, right. Um, somebody was speaking to me on Facebook the other day about, well, the, a lot of new photographers um, going out and buying really, really expensive lighting gear when they are getting started out because they think there's this sort of misapprehension, I think, amongst people that are starting out in photography that somehow it's the, it's the, it's how much money you spend on the gear is going to be the thing that gives you good photographs or not. And I'm here to tell you that, that definitely isn't the case. And hopefully make the case for it so that, well, you might actually believe me and hopefully save somebody save some money as well. So, well, let's talk about what light is, first of all. Light is, uh, light can be described in various ways uh, that are useful to us as photographers. We can talk about the, the quantity of light. Uh, we can talk about how, basically how much light there is. Is it going to be a, a brighter thing or a darker thing? Uh, we can talk about uh, the, uh, the the shape of the light, you know, is it going to be soft or hard? We can talk about the direction of the light. There's many things that we can talk about when it comes to light. But what we don't often hear people talking about in the photographic business is the cost of the light. Let me explain what I mean. Um, here is a is a, a flash gun, a speed light gun that sits on top of a camera. Teaching my grandmother to suck eggs, I know. This costs about... 50 pounds or probably about $50 if you are watching this in America land. And it sits either on the top of a camera or on the top of a stick and you poke, you point it at something that you want to have more light on it and light comes out. And you can change with the buttons on the back there, the amount of light that's coming out. Uh, you can change the shape of the light by modifying it with different soft boxes or umbrellas and that sort of stuff. And you can change the direction of light by moving the little stick you've got it mounted on around. You can also go and buy a very expensive uh, Canon or Nikon flash that might cost several hundred pounds. And that's also got the same features on it. This thing here, this is a studio head. Works in a very similar way to that. It's just bigger. More light can come out of it. And because it runs off the power, the recycle time is a bit faster. So once you've fired a whole bunch of light out of it, it recharges quicker so that you can get more light out of it again. And use it again. And that's tremendous because it gives you the opportunity to do a few more different things. But the same principle applies. This thing is an off-brand thing. I don't even know what that is. It's a, it's a 300 Di. God only knows what that is. It came off, I think, eBay or Amazon or something. I don't even remember how much I paid for it. Uh, I've got a whole bunch of these sitting around in the studio, and uh, they are, well, they work, and I've had them for years, and none of them have broken. They've got a modeling light on as well, which means that as well as having the flash that comes out, there's another bulb in the middle there that, or it might be the one around the outside, actually, but as well as having a flash, it's also got a, a continuous light, so you can kind of tell before it fires off exactly where the light is going to land which is a tremendous thing. And that gives you a little bit more uh, control over where it's going to be. It would have cost probably for a set of three, about 100 quid, 200 quid, something like that. And it does exactly the same thing as the really expensive flashes for most people for most of the time. And unless you're one of the few people that really requires a tremendous amount of power, or requires a tremendously fast cycle time, like you're trying to get like you know uh, shots of people doing backflips on you know on uh, skateboards or skis or something. It's going to be the same light. And if it's the same light, why would you spend any more? The thing about these, I actually ran one of these over in my car once. I was coming back from a shoot and it was dark, and I backed the car. Over. I thought it was dark. I thought I'd put all the light stands back in the car with the lights on them. There was one left, and we were in the field in the middle of nowhere. And as I backed the car, but there was a bump and a clank, and uh, then I got out of the car and, and fished it out from underneath the car, and one of these was all just smushed and broken into the mud. Did I shed a tear? No, I didn't shed a tear because it cost me 50 pounds. Would I have shed a tear? I was shooting Nikon at the time. Would, it, would I have shed a tear if it was an SB900? You bet your life I would have shed a tear. I'd have shed 900 or however much those things cost. They're expensive. Um, so 
you know, you get you get uh, diminishing returns when you when you start out. And so I want to make the case for people starting out that are thinking about maybe they're on YouTube and maybe they're looking through. Maybe this video has come up as part of what you're searching for, looking for what best flashes to buy, what what you know off camera flashes you want to start in your photography business. And you think, well, you know, if I put a bit more budget towards this, I'm going to get a better quality light and it's going to make my pictures look better. And well, it isn't. <laughs> it isn't. It's the same light uh, that's coming out of the camera. Now, there are the, out of the flash. Now, there are going to be people in the comments I know uh, who are going to say, well, look, you know, a flash like this, which is all cheap, it's going to be inconsistent from flash to flash in terms of the white balance. You're not going to get exactly the same color of light comes out because it uses crappy bulbs. And if you go and get one of the really expensive lights, uh, then it's going to be a, a lot sort of it's going to be perfectly 5500 kelvin every time out the back yes okay that is true that is true um however there's two things about that one uh if you are shooting you know ad campaigns when you're when you're shooting products and it's really really important that you get the actual color actually right perfectly right then yes okay that's fine i understand but most of us are not doing that. Most of us are using portraits with these things in a, you know, in a studio or in location somewhere. It doesn't matter if the white balance is this, that, and the other way. And if you're really concerned about white balance, shoot with a shoot a grey card and then take a, a an eyedropper off that in Lightroom or whatever, and set your white balance like that. If you're shooting in RAW, which you probably should be, but even if you're shooting in JPEG it, these days, um, it will convert it without really any artifacts or loss of quality. You know, just just get the get the thing right from from that perspective. It, it, and if it's a slight variance, and you and you shot a hundred shots, and there's a slight variance up and down. I mean, I've never personally noticed the difference uh, in in white balance from shot to shot using these. And uh, you know, into, or in, even it's in, in terms of things like consistency of light that's coming out. They seem perfectly good enough to do almost everything. And yes, they aren't going to be as good as uh, as a very expensive light, but they're going to be ninety nine percent there. And you have to ask yourself the question, is it worth spending thousands in the case of the studio heads um, or, or hundreds in the case of the speed lights extra in order to get uh, that small amount of, of additional functionality or, or of quality? Um, now, the same thing applies to your the rest of your gear, your camera gear. The amount of people that have been on my workshops that have come to my classes that have uh, that, that have met me and said, "Oh, well, you know, I I, I really like your photo series that you did on X Y Z, and so or, or that photo walk you did, or that class you taught." And uh, I was so inspired, I, I went out and I bought the camera, and they come show it to me, like, "Look, you know, look at." I, I, I went out and I bought. I bought, the, I, bought, I bought the XT2 because you had it, and now I can take photos like you. Look, I, haven't I done the right thing? Aren't I? Aren't I a good student? And. Um, and I love you guys, I really do. But 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 this isn't the thing that makes the photos. It's this, and it's like people don't listen when because I don't teach like what the gear is when I'm when I'm teaching my uh, classes. I don't teach that. I teach developing your photographer's brain. It's all about putting in here a set of thought patterns and strategies and techniques that you can use, whether, that you can then map onto the world around you, so that you can uh, pull out the right techniques in order to tell better stories with your camera. You can increase the signal to noise ratio as we were talking about in the last video, the, the, the signal being the pure emotion of what drove you to take that photo in, in the first place and, and being transmitting that signal into the picture and then into the heart and the soul of the viewers that are looking at it. That's what's important. And the noise is all the stuff that gets in the way. And they're not gonna look at you and go, oh, well, you know, I'm afraid I'm not interested in that because he shot it on an X-T2 and the X-T3's out now. And so, well, your photo is no good. Pal, they're not doing that. Nobody's ever done that in the history of photography. They've never looked to the camera and gone uh, at, a, at, a, at, a, at a photo and gone, "Oh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm judging that not on the quality of the, uh, of the of the photo result. I'm judging it on the camera. Is it, it was the camera uh, any good? Was it the latest one? Did it have all the bells and whistles? How many buttons did it have on the back of it? How many menus did it have? You know, all this stuff. It's like, no, that isn't the stuff that's important. Now, again. There are reasons why you would want to upgrade the camera if there's if you're shooting a lot of uh, stuff in low light, for example, and you want something that that handles low light better. If you've got a camera that's you know a few generations old and the modern ones are better at low light, fair enough. Or the autofocus is better, fair enough. Then do that, uh, but don't upgrade it if if you're thinking that that's going to be the thing. 
that makes your photos better because it won't. And it's the same with the flashes and it's the same with the modifiers and it's the same with the tripods and it's the same with the bags. It's the same with everything that you could possibly think of about photography. It's not about the gear that you use. The most important part of the gear is the bit between here and here. It's the photographer's brain. It's the bit that says, I'm going to analyze what's in front of me, decide what it is that's driving me about this scene to make it into a photograph. What is it about this that, 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 is, that is inspiring me? And what is the story that I want to tell with this photo? And then figuring out how to capture that photographically. And sometimes you need a bit of extra light to do that. And you're almost certainly going to need a camera to do that. But don't think that going out and buying the, the, the latest upgrade is going to be the one. And uh, you know, because it isn't. And all the manufacturers out there, they want you to buy the latest one because it's got more megapixels in it and it's better in low light and it's got a faster recycle time and it's got more buttons on the top and it's got a built-in radio receiver that does a thing. And like, you know, this one sings jingle bells. This one doesn't sing jingle bells. Don't buy this if you think it'll sell jingle bells. It, it doesn't. But you know what I mean? Like all the bells and the whistles on these things. <sighs> it's a light and it's supposed to shine light on a thing so that you can sort of put light in the right place in your picture. That's it. That's it, that's all it's for. And so, well, I wanted to do this very quick video. Um, I apologize for the, the quality I'm actually going out to teach tonight, um, which is why I'm dressed up uh, like this, although personally I think it's an improvement uh, over my regular face. <laughs> and so I'm gonna go off and teach my portrait class now. Uh, for Halloween, we're all gonna be dressing up in these silly masks and uh, taking ridiculous photos of each other with really cheap lights. And I can absolutely guarantee you that it won't make any difference at all to, uh, to what the quality of the pictures looks like. So that's it for now. Thanks very much for watching and uh, happy Halloween. Uh, your normal, regularly scheduled program will be, uh, will be, will be back tomorrow <laughs> with a decent camera on it and uh, my beautiful face uh, back again. So <laughs> talk to you later.